Coming up, TCS students prove that Tuscaloosa can. Plus, we'll show you some of our talented students performing at Celebrate the Arts. And we'll have highlights from the Basketball Final Four, plus baseball and golf highlights. We'll also show you a heartwarming story of how an entire school is helping a student athlete in his time of need. All this and more straight ahead on Inside Tuscaloosa City Schools. Hi, thanks for joining us today for Inside Tuscaloosa City Schools. I'm Eddie McClinton. Well, it's an annual event with a new name, but the lessons that students learn is still the focus. The Dinah Washington Cultural Arts Center was one of the sites of Tuscaloosa Can, where students build structures out of canned food. I had a great opportunity to employ principles of design and hands-on learning in designing really large structures of canned food. Baseball field, hungry caterpillar, and the American flag were among the entries. Oh, uh, we're building a fidget spinner. A piece of pie. We're making a, um, a branch. We built the national championship trophy. There's no lack of creativity in this event. It's every TTS school submitted an entry. Schultz says the event exposes students to a cross-curricular learning experience. We like to think it's a place where they can apply their knowledge into hands-on learning projects. Uh, incorporating all the uh, knowledge that they've learned in math, and science, and using technology to design these great structures. We learned about like working together as a team and like not arguing at each other. And we practiced that a lot. We had to find area and like see how to move it and everything. Yeah, we take turns. The orange wristbands are for the fifth grade, then the yellows are for the uh, fourth grade. So we had to calculate, so we cut pieces of wood, and we had to calculate the diameter of them by using uh, things that we used in class. Other participating galleries include the Monarch Espresso Bar, Paul Jones Gallery, Harrison Gallery, and Upper. The end result of Tuscaloosa Can is that students are learning to give to those who are the most needy. The service learning component is really essential to us, uh, and it is the part that they're giving back. Um, food insecurity impacts students in our school system as well, so uh, it's a win for our students, it's a win for our community. An annual showcase features some of Tuscaloosa's best in choral music, band, strings, dance, and drama. It's Celebrate the Arts. Check out some of the highlights from this year's show.
annual event where middle school students throughout the city and county square off for book knowledge supremacy has evolved into a qualifier, pitting just city middle schoolers together to see who goes on to the countywide challenge. What is the name of the team? Yes, That's correct. Uh, Battle of the Book is like when a whole bunch of schools come together and they like compete and answer questions about a certain book and stuff. We read different books on different genres and you know we compete against other schools answering certain questions about the book. You read different books and then you get to compete using buzzers trying to answer questions before the other team. So Battle of the Books is like, so you read like six or like five to six books and then they ask you questions. It helps you by going like out there because it's not something a lot of people are like, comfortable with. I really like trivia. Whenever I'm at my house, I do trivia by myself and with my family. I personally enjoy reading, so it's fun for me. I enjoy reading, so and I like discussing books. It's fun because I'm really competitive. I'm very competitive. It's a big part. Something that we really do at our school competition, so it's something I'm really into. Four TCS teams advanced to the next round, including Eastwood, Rock Quarry, and Magnet Middle. Hillcrest Middle School was the overall winner. Well, TCS Superintendent Dr. Mike Daria visited six schools and awarded eight students with a Kindle Fire HD or a Barnes & Noble gift card. These students finished first or second in number of books read or Lexile growth during the Myon Madness competition that took place between March 9th and March 31st. PTA at Southview Elementary School organized a Healthy Living Day where parents and staff could give the gift of life. We are having, this is one of our workshops and it's called Benefits of Healthy Living and we do track day so we invite parents to come out and walk track with their children during their PE time. It uh, helps your heart and it helps your health because you run and get good exercise and stuff. So. You have to uh, drink milk, eat vegetables and eat lots of fruit to stay healthy and you have to exercise to keep your body with a lot of energy. And the um, nursing interns from Shelton has come out and they do blood pressure screening for the parents and we partner with Life South and they are doing, um, parents can do blood donations. And we want to, you know, involve the community in what we do at the school because it is a partnership. So we wanted to make sure we have opportunities for parents to come in and work with their children. Students at Rock Quarry Middle School are learning about famous people in an unusual way that's also right up their alley. Well, it, it's fake book. It's based on, on Facebook. Uh, there is no interaction. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a way for them to summarize the text. Uh, they start out with uh, a biography or an autobiography and uh, they read it. Um, well, we were given a book from the library about our person, which is where we got the idea for it in the first place. And then we had to read the book and develop the entire life timeline. You got to research the person and learn a lot about him, and they got to put that all into a fake book page, which is like Facebook. They're responsible for 
um, an about section. Uh, they, they choose their friends and they research the friends. Uh, and then they create posts uh, based on the most important things that happen in their lives. And we would take the most important friends from it that were mentioned the most in the book, or the ones that had the most relation into the most important things in their lives, and you would put them into the friends column. Uh, it was just fun to learn about. I already know who Rick Riordan was because I read his books, and it was just fun to learn about new facts about him and a bunch of other people that I already knew that people played. I just got to learn more facts about them also and it was just a cool new way to do it. I had to read the book and I had to tell like the importance of her life. So it was kind of hard because she was someone who wasn't really in modern times. She was someone from like the 1800s, so it was kind of really hard to, to be her. I think it makes it more fun than just having to read and write a book report. You can get more information from the modern technology. Because book reports are boring. It's a lot more fun to learn it this way because I'm a little more engaged with it because it's just better than reading it from a paper and so you get to add pictures, you get to read, you get to find out more about it. Sports is next. Stay tuned for more Inside Tuscaloosa City Schools. Keep up with the latest Tuscaloosa City Schools news. Check out exciting photos and informative videos by liking the Tuscaloosa City Schools on Facebook. Log on to facebook.com slash TCS Board of Ed for the latest in City Schools news. Teachers across Tuscaloosa are preparing the next generation of leaders and their efforts are made easier with your support. From the classroom, to the community, to the playing field, see how city school students are making an impact. Watch Inside Tuscaloosa City Schools Monday through Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. and Thursday and Friday at 6.30 p.m. on Comcast Channel 20 and UVerse Channel 99. For up-to-the-minute notices on important Tuscaloosa City Schools happenings, follow us on Twitter at TCS Board of Ed. We would love your help as a Junior Achievement Volunteer. If you love children and you don't mind learning lessons to present, you're qualified. We will provide all of the training that you need and all of the materials. It's no cost to you other than your time. If you're interested in learning more about the program, the training takes about 45 minutes. Uh, you can contact me, Carla Harris, at carla.harris at ja.org or you can reach me by phone at 205-391-0335. We would love to have your help. Welcome into sports. The Central Falcon Lady Basketball Team cruised through the regionals and found themselves in Birmingham at the Final Four for the second time in three years. Scottsboro was all that stood in the way of a berth in the state title game.
The Falcons ran into a buzzsaw in the state championship game, and the season ended one victory short of the title. But Quintasia Leatherwood and Sakaya White were named to the all-tournament team. Well, the Paul W. Bryant Stampede High Boys were right where they thought they would be, back in the Final Four for the second year in a row. They needed just two wins to capture the state title. The opponent in the semis was Parker, the team that Bryant beat to win the championship a year ago. Stampede took on Carver for the state title, and on that day the Wolverines couldn't miss as they upended Bryant to win the 6A state championship. Calix Stevens and Jared Sherfield were named to the all-tournament team. When high school tennis action, the Northridge Jaguars squared off against the Bryant Stampede. The annual West Alabama Golf Tournament held at Old Colony brought in more than 100 players, including the host Northridge Jaguars team. With a competitive field, the Jaguars finished ninth. While on the baseball diamond, 
the Central Falcons hosted the Dragons of Winona. In a big area baseball rivalry, the Northridge Jaguars hosted Hillcrest with an inside track to the playoffs on the line. On senior night at Northridge High School, nine seniors were honored and the Jags faced the Paul W. Bryant Stampede in an important area game. Zakira Landrum, a volleyball player from Paul W. Bryan High School, recently made a decision that will greatly affect her future as she signed to play volleyball at Huntington College. It is a dream come true. I've been working this like ever since maybe ninth grade and talking to coaches, so it's overwhelming, honestly. I've lost hope like maybe my 10th grade, 11th grade year because I really didn't have like maybe the skill set, so I kept working, kept working, and I got where I want to be in here. 
It's, um, it's a place I chose because it's a very small campus. The teacher, the, the student to teacher ratio is awesome, 16 to 1. Um, they have the major, I plan to major in exercise science, I want to be an athletic trainer. So, yeah, um, it just fit all the criteria, honestly. Um, I'm very mentally tough, so anything that comes on the court, I'm able to handle it physically and mentally. Um, my coach, he helped me throughout the recruiting process. He got me to talk to coaches. He got me out of my comfort zone. Um, we were in here pretty much every day practicing, um, getting ready for tournaments and everything. And he honestly helped me become a better player, honestly. It's just very exciting, overwhelming, makes me want to just like burst out in tears, but I'm not going to, but yeah, it's just a, a very great day. A team and an entire school is rallying around one of their own following a devastating diagnosis. Uh, it was good. Uh... They treated me like family. I came in, they just like let me fit right in, you know. They showed me stuff, new stuff. He's a fun guy to have at practice. Always up. He's, you know, he always trying to compete to catch the most balls in practice. Went through the season together and learned all, like, learned all the plays, went through the new playbook, the new signals, and just kind of grew his friends and his teammates and had a good time this season. I love just his attitude every day at going to practice, and uh, I, I have couple class with, classes with him, uh, love going to school with him. Uh, he's a great kid, always got a great attitude. And we're really proud to, to, to have him here with us and, and the, what he's done for this program, for our school, um, has been great. Uh, January, I was uh, sick the whole month. Um, I thought it was a stomach virus, apparently it wasn't. And I went to the doctor, I got an MRI. He came back in the room calmly and, uh, and said, you got a tumor, and he showed me the x-ray where the tumor was at. And I don't know, I was shocked. I was like, this, is, this explains the headaches and stuff that have been going on for so long. I was shook, you know. Didn't know what to think, really. Well, really, my heart just went out to him. Um, I just wanted to be there for him and uh, do everything, I, anything I could to uh, help him out a little bit and just be there. So we had the talk. Um, we talked to our, our team. We had a team meeting last week when Eric got um, news back from his doctor and, and, and we just we challenged him to be, to be ready to fight with him. If it was somebody else, I know he'll be doing the same thing to help us. You know, he's our family, a brother of us, so we gotta help. When we have something to rally for, we come together and we figure out a way to try to make an impact. Um, Eric obviously needs our help, and as this, this school, this football team, uh, is a rallying point, and we're, we're fully behind him. And I think that really shows what our school's about and what and we're willing to get behind any of our students that need help. It's a great feeling. You know, uh, it's, it's like me and new people, like a whole new family and stuff. And it's like, I know they're supporting me regardless, so it's a great feeling. Keep up with the latest TCS news and information. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and connect with us on YouTube and Instagram at TCS Board of Ed. Thank you for watching this show and supporting the students, teachers, and staff of the Tuscaloosa City Schools. Until next time, good night.